I'm a worthless piece of shit. I'm not looking for your sympathy. I know my existence is pointless, and I don't care. You should see me right now. I just woke up on the kitchen floor, a ring of drool and dirt adhering my face to the tile. My hands look like tenderized meat, swollen and stained with blood. Perpetually greasy hair is stuck to my forehead, and I'm wearing the same yellowing shirt that I put on probably three weeks ago. Hell, at least I'm wearing pants. Granted, there's blood on them, but pants for me is somewhat of a triumph. The smell. Oh, that damn smell. The pungent aroma of sticky skin and sweaty shame. I wear it like cologne. However, I doubt you could pick up my scent among the piles of garbage and moldy dishes. Next to my face I see a cigarette butt floating in a half-finished warm beer. I grab it and chug it down, butt and all. Anyway, go ahead, do a few turns. If you can guess how many empty beer bottles and spent cigarettes there are in this room alone, I'll give you two hundred dollars. Those fucking perverts, I thought to myself as I rolled onto my back with a grimace. Disgusting fucking pedophiles. Shit, my leg hurts like hell. Last night I went to get beer. I say that as if it's a rare occasion, but that's basically my every night. Last night, though, I shook my head a little, my eyes still closed. Shit. It was unforgivable. Macy. I barely open my blurry eyes and stare at the smoke-stained yellow tint of the ceiling, thinking of her blonde hair. My Macy. I fight back tears for a moment. I let my head roll to the right and notice a pizza crust just under the table next to me. It's hard as a rock, but I crunch it down, my eyelids sagging heavily. I wasn't always like this. You wouldn't guess it by looking at me, but I used to be a decent person. I did eight years in the service, honorably discharged, got a decent job, found a cute wife that I didn't deserve and became a father to the sweetest little girl. Four years ago, my daughter was abducted, raped, and murdered by a good friend. Well, I say good friend, but if he was standing in front of me right now, I'd spear him to the fucking ground. I'd clamber up in a blind rage on his chest and beat his face into a mushy tomato. A tomato with skull fragments and teeth strewn about, a tomato gasping and gurgling through blood and mangled flesh for breath, I might even see how far I could push my thumbs into his eye sockets. Daniel didn't even make it as far as being arrested. I couldn't believe it when he became the top suspect two weeks after they found Macy's naked body wrapped in her favorite blanket and muddy black trash bags. When detectives showed up at his house, the fucking coward shot himself in the head with the Colt 38 that I gave him for Christmas several years ago. They found Daniel's computer filled with child pornography and three pairs of panties hanging on extravagantly decorative hooks in his bedroom. One of those panties was Macy's. The rape kit confirmed Daniel's involvement in Macy's murder, as well as two other toddlers in the area. My wife kept holding on to hope that our three-year-old was alive, but when they discovered her body, Carla had a mental breakdown. She wouldn't eat, didn't sleep, and eventually overdosed. I'm not convinced it was on purpose, but it was determined to be a suicide. Make no mistake, the thought has crossed my mind as well. It would be fucking easy to be done with it all. On my usual trip, I walk to the same corner store, talk to the same clerk, buy the same beer, smoke the same cigarettes. Two years and I still don't know that damn clerk's name. It has like three fucking R's and two J's, but I can't pronounce it, and his accent is so thick he might as well not even be speaking English. Last night I'd run out of beer, and the drunkenness was starting to work its way back into a heavy buzz, so I decided to take my walk. The route takes about 15 minutes through a few stereotypical alleyways and side streets. It's sketchy as hell, but if I got mugged and killed, I'd give that guy a fucking medal. The majority of the houses I walk past are dilapidated and abandoned. There is one particularly large house that must have been nice at some point. It has a wooden awning over an enormous porch that wraps around almost the entire place, although most of that is now falling down and rotting out. While appreciating the stoop, I hear a very faint scream come from what I think must be inside. I try my best to focus through the heavy buzz and see a light flash across one of the basement windows. Fucking stupid kids. I need beer. I turned away from the house to continue down the street, and then I heard a tiny voice scream. 
Macy. Instantly, my mind flashes back to the lake behind Dad's old house, and little Macy barely able to keep her head above water as she shrieked for me to save her. I'm frozen in place. Impossible. Adrenaline pumps clarity into my head, and I quietly hurry to the basement window that's facing me. The damn thing's so dirty that I can't see through it. I go around the corner of the house for a better view, and luckily, part of the next window was broken out. Don't you fucking scream again, you little bitch, or we'll be back and we'll kill your whole fucking family. A skinny, scraggly-looking man hisses under hushed tones. I hear the sound of duct tape being torn off the roll. I can't see who he's talking to. I try to move forward without exposing my face. Suddenly, another man walks into the room, and I pull back slightly. He sets his flashlight on a bucket that dimly illuminates the room. All right, man, we're good to go. L let's do it, said the fleshy friend. The holes and filth in his shirt could give mine a run for its money. What in the fuck is this? I lean in further, and I can now see the back of a small figure with long blonde hair and a blindfold tied around the top of her head. She's sitting in an old wooden chair with her hands bound to the back slats. I hear whimpers and little moans and sniffles as she sits there facing them. It's my Macy. Another huge surge of adrenaline courses through me and I let out a gasp. Both men shoot a glance at the broken window. It must be dark enough that they can't see me because I pulled my head back with an obvious delay. What? what the fuck was that? I can hear the trepidation in Skinny's voice. Who the fuck knows? Probably a cat or some shit. Dude, who gives a shit? I've been waiting a week for this shit. Grimy focusing his wide eyes back on her. My Macy. I have to get her out. I run around the back porch, staying as quiet as I can, even though my heart is pounding through my chest and loud in my ears. I take long steps onto and across the rotting wooden patio. I have to get her. The back door has no knob, and looks like it was broken into long ago. I slowly push open the door, which gives a loud but brief creak. I stop for a moment, and hear no reaction from below. Just inside the house is the kitchen, and my first instinct is to find a weapon. It's so dark I can barely see. An old wooden table lay upside down, two of its legs missing and holes broken through the top. One of the remaining legs is nearly disconnected, and with some slight prying, it comes free. The hallway leading out of the kitchen has a door that opens under what looks like the stairs, which I figure is the way down to the basement. The floor is surprisingly quiet as I work my way to the door, but the old wooden basement stairs are probably going to make some noise. I have to move fast. I can hear muffles of men speaking, and as I open the door slowly, the muffles become audible. I'm keeping her panties. You got the last one. Fleshy, the cocksucker, stares fervently. Then let me go first this time, Skinny insists. Daniel kept her panties. My nervous stomach and anxiety are rapidly unraveling into rage. He fucking kept them. Like a trophy. I go berserk. I hurl myself down the stairs, alerting the two sons of bitches. Skinny belted out, someone's here! I land at the bottom of the steps and raise the wooden leg up just as Skinny appears through the doorway. I let loose a maniacal howl and smash the square edge into his forehead and eyebrow. Blood explodes into his eyes and down his face and the table leg shatters in my hand. Skinny goes limp and falls. His skull splits with a wet thud on the concrete floor. Fleshy pulls a knife and motions towards me. I'm so enraged that I ignore the blade and charge him. The steel sinks into my upper thigh as I drive my shoulder into his chest. My momentum is able to crush him to the ground and sends him sliding a bit away from me. I reach out, pull on his shirt, and use it to clamber up on top of his chest. My legs pin down his arms, and I begin to brutalize his face. Punch after vicious punch flays open skin every time I slam my fists into the red mess, the frenzy spurting increasing amounts of blood. His face starts to cave in as the fragile bones around his nose and eyes give way. Bright pieces of bone appear amongst the pulp. Feels as if I'm kneading strawberry jelly into cookie dough. I press my thumbs into where I think his eyes should be. I push through the tissue and feel a hard ball under my right thumb. I drill my nail into it and feel a satisfying burst. I stop to catch my breath. My hands are gloved in dark crimson and tiny white fragments. Stringy red bubbles gurgle around his mouth as he gasps for breath through the carnage. I crawl over to my Macy, still tied to the chair, and lay my head in her lap. I slowly and loosely hug her tiny legs with my bloody arms, and then I sob like a child. After a few minutes, I look up and see a little girl with dark brown hair and soft features. Disoriented, I ask, Where, where's Macy? I gently reach my hand up and slip the blindfold over her head, and she makes a little squeak. 
Hair is glued to her face with sweat. I'm glassy-eyed and confused. She winces as I try my best to remove the duct tape from her mouth without hurting her. Tears trickle down and tumble across her chubby cheeks. I want to go home! She whimpers and sniffles, her eyes still fixed on me. The knife is sticking out of my leg. The searing pain forces me to come to my senses. I gently reach my hand up to her shoulder and say, Okay, let's get you out of here. She slowly nods. I brace myself with a deep breath and pull the knife from my leg while I still have some adrenaline left. I squeeze my eyes closed and clench my jaw with an involuntary grunt and grab my leg. Goodness fuck, that fucking hurt! Shit! Blood gushes from the opening as I take a few deep breaths. I cut out a big section of skinny shirt, wad it up, and secure it over the wound with my belt. I carefully cut the ropes around her hands, pick the little girl up, and carry her out of the house. Her little hand is clamped down on my finger while she walks, and I hobble towards the corner store to get that case of beer. <laughs>